Hey everybody, and welcome back to another video in our series of companion guides to the Eye of the World, the first book in the Wheel of Time series. Now today we're going to explore chapter 5 of Eye of the World titled Winter Night. Now make sure to check out the previous videos in this series, as we're going to be breaking down all of the chapters of Eye of the World, and all of these videos are going to be available on thegreatblight.com in the written companion guides that are there, and then you can also find them in YouTube playlists. Now the videos in this series are broken down into two sections. The first section is a basic recap of the chapter, but with additional maps and visuals to help you understand what you just read. This section is completely safe for first time readers, and it's not going to spoil anything beyond that point in the books. In fact, it's designed with first time readers in mind. The second section of the video will be completely spoiler filled, and it's going to not only break down what happened in the chapter, but we'll also dive into all of the foreshadowing, the Easter eggs to our world, the cool stuff that you might have missed buried in the chapter. Robert Jordan is the master of this, and so every chapter tends to have a ton of stuff to get to. Now this entire video series is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest provider of audiobooks, and the Wheel of Time audiobooks are outstanding. It's my favorite way to reread the series. I'm basically always doing it. Right now I'm on A Memory of Light. Now Audible is offering a free audiobook to all of my viewers. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and get the free trial for the service. You can keep the book even if you don't want to keep the service, and you really support the channel by doing so. Again, www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless, or you can just click the link in the description of the video. So let's go ahead and recap chapter five of Eye of the World, titled Winter Night. Now the chapter begins as Rand and Tam arrive back at their farm after spending the day in Emmons Field. Tam sends Rand to do some basic chores around the farm while Tam gets ready for dinner. Rand stables Bella, gathers some eggs from the chicken, and hoes the vegetable garden, and then he splits some firewood for a while. Now, all the time while he's doing that, he's thinking about how long the winter has been and wondering if anything is going to sprout in the garden and what they're going to do, basically just worrying. Now, Tam eventually gets Rand and brings him inside for dinner. The house is a small house with a large stone hearth. It's got a fire in it. Now, as they wait for the stew that Tam is cooking to finish, Tam locks the front and the back doors in the house, something that Rand hasn't seen him ever do. Basically, he says that they're going to do this as a precaution against the man in black. Then he proceeds to go get a heron-marked sword out of a chest upstairs from his room. Rand has never seen his father with a sword, and he becomes very curious as to where Tam had gotten the sword. Now, Tam gives him some vague answers about getting it a long time ago, but he really can't get any further as the door, they hear a slamming sound on the door, and then suddenly it's shattered off its hinges and a large humanoid figure with ram's horns and taller than Rand had ever seen rushes in the door. Now Rand throws the boiling water that he was holding at that figure at the humanoid that walked in. We later find out that's a trollic. And Tam proceeds to fight off the beasts with his sword. Now Tam tells Rand to run out and Tam runs out the back of the house and he goes and hides in the trees around their farm. Now it's very dark and Rand sees more of the large humanoids, again trollics, coming around the backside of the house where Rand had left. He warns Tam by yelling at him, and Tam jumps out one of the windows of the house with his sword in hand. Tam then tells Rand to run and leads the invaders off a different direction, away from Rand, to buy him time to get away. Eventually, Tam sneaks back up to where Rand was hiding, having lost the Trollocs for the time being. Tam explains to Rand that they are Trollocs, a form of shadow spawn that Rand hadn't really even believed existed. Rand notices that Tam had been wounded and he was starting to run a fever. He collapses from the exhaustion and Rand realizes that he's going to need to get Tam back to the safety of Emmons Field where Nynaeve could help heal him. And so to do that, he's going to need Bella and their cart to get him there. Rand takes Tam's sword and goes back into the house to try to get some supplies. He notices a number of dead Trollocs in the room and begins to gather some supplies and water. Now, while he's inside, one of the Trollocs stands up that had been pretending to be dead and starts to speak with Rand. He names himself Narg, and he tells Rand to put the sword down so that the Merdral can come speak with him. The Trolloc then lunges at Rand, and Rand stabs him through the chest as it falls on him. Now, Rand leaves the house and finds Bella gone and the cart broken, but he quickly modifies the cart with his sword so that he can pull it himself, and then he pulls it back outside and finds Tam in worse shape than when he originally left him. 
so the fever is progressing. He loads Tam into the cart and tells him that he's going to get him to Nynaeve in the village. So that's it for the recap of Winter Night, Chapter 5 of Eye of the World. We're now going to jump into the spoiler section. The rest of this video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers running all the way through A Memory of Light, the final book in the series. If you have not finished reading all of the books, watch this at your own risk. So let's kick things off here by taking a look at some of the foreshadowing in the chapter. We'll start with a very small thing, but when Rand enters the house, he points out that Tam's The Travels of Jane Farstrider book is sitting next to his reading chair. Now this is the first mention of Travels of Jane Farstrider and Jane Farstrider in general. But this is very subtle setup that eventually leads to us meeting him. This is one of many times that you're going to see the book in the series. Now, this is the first time, actually. And we sort of understand that Jane Farstrider is a celebrity of sorts in the Westlands. So it really adds to the impact when we finally discover that Noel was actually Jane. The next piece of foreshadowing surrounds the Heron Marked Sword. When Rand asks Tam where he got that and how much it cost him, Tam just brushes it off and says that he paid too much for it. A somewhat cryptic response to the question, or at least dodging. We find out later that Tam actually got the sword in service to the King of Ilion as a member of the Ilioner Companions. Tam's avoidance of the subject of his past leads Rand to start wondering who his father is. This is just one of the small clues that there's more to Tam Althor than Rand knows. The writing around Tam's character is very subtle and strung out over the novels. We really don't get large chunks about him, which is one of the reasons I think he's such a great character, but it's so well done throughout, and this is kind of the beginning of that. So let's hit on some general thoughts from the chapter. First of all, I love how Rand's descriptions of the house when they first walk in, they're super cozy and relaxing. He talks about the large hearth, the warmth of the fire, the order and cleanliness of the house. This is truly the very last time in the series that you're going to see Rand relaxed. And I love that. Not much later than they walk into the house and he starts talking about this, Trollocs bust down the door. And then he's fighting the shadow for three years and it ends with Rand at Shea Ghoul. Like he's literally never this relaxed. Now along that same line of thought, this is the first time that we're introduced to Trollocs and Rand is extremely frightened and feels really, really helpless. He even leaves his father fighting alone as he runs away, which kind of gets at him. Now this scene is really kind of the setup for the power creep that Rand is gonna go through over the course of the novels. He starts off scared of a few Trollocs, and he's going to progress to the point within three years of this that he's able to wipe out armies of 100,000 Trollocs all by himself. And then he later finds himself in a position where he can literally kill a godlike entity in the Dark One. He really comes a long way, and it kind of starts here with him running away from a couple Trollocs. So let's also talk about Narg. Everyone's favorite meme shadow spawn from the Wheel of Time. Narg is the only Trolloc that we hear speak with a human in the series. Narg plays dead, and then when Rand is back in the house to get supplies for Tam, Narg stands up, surprising him, and tells him to put the sword down and come talk to the merge all with him. He attempts to be sly, and then when Rand lowers the sword just a little bit, the Trolloc rushes him and Rand stabs him. And that's the end of Narg. Now, we do know that Trollocs speak with each other. They have their own language, and it's likely that they would also speak some English, as they need to be able to be commanded by the Chosen or by high-ranking Dark Friends. We just don't ever get to hear it again, so that's why this sort of stands out. And also, we know Narg's smart. The last thing to mention here is the Herodmark sword itself. We see the signs that it was a power forged as Rand uses it to cut and shave down a cart to modify it so he could pull it himself, since Bella was gone. After hacking the wood for some time, the blade wasn't dulled at all, showing its strength. You can learn more about a Herodmark sword, by the way, by checking out a video by unraveling the pattern. Did an awesome non-spoiler and spoiler breakdown of Heronmark weapons. Definitely check that out. I'll have that linked in the description. Now, one thing I will always remember about Winter Night, as a chapter at least, is that this is where Eye of the World essentially picks up, and it doesn't let up until the end of the book. As I mentioned for the boys, specifically Matt, Rand, and Perrin, they are constantly being chased, they're on the run, they're in danger for the entire book after this chapter. I always felt like this is where Wheel of Time truly began, what are your thoughts on Winter Night? Make sure to let me know what you think of the chapter in the comments of this video. Also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I post more Wheel of Time content. 
That is literally all I do here on this channel. Again, reminder, go check out Audible by clicking on the link or going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus. Get your free audiobook, listen to the series, it's awesome. And depending on when you watch this video, there are likely other videos just like this breaking down the later chapters of the book. So keep watching this playlist if you want to see all of them. It is great binge content. Thank you for watching, everybody. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?